Okay, my friends, another shocker du jour today. This is about light, and light is a fluid. And we use the Venturi to speed up the flow of that fluid by constricting it in a cone-shaped tube. That accelerates light. All right, we're talking about light. That's light. Think of that as water vapor. Think of this as water vapor. It's nothing more than tiniest, tiniest little particles of H2O, which is water. However, this is light. This is way smaller than that. So it can go through the Venturi at extreme speeds. Now don't forget, we're going from that, which is pulsed red laser, into a Venturi. And here's when it happens to go into the Venturi. It stops losing its zip like a rocket ship. And here's where the Venturi, it literally separates the black particles from the white particles. Because light is constructed of those two particles, these two right here. Exactly what they found at CERN and Fermilab. Only they find them in debris. We find them in our actual experiments showing the light. And they have just done the same thing at CERN. And Family Lab, I believe, too. They're using CMOS, which I, I, I told them long ago. I said, you use CMOS to pick it up. But they were using protons. And the protons are much heavier and destructive than, than light particles. We can use the CMOS all day long. It doesn't, it doesn't even harm it. They said, oh, no, no, you can't use CMOS because you, you're going to break those particles. And that may be quite true, because they were hitting things head on that were big, gigantic, hundreds of billions of particles at a time. We're hitting hundreds of billions of particles at, a, at the same time. There's almost nothing here. But they create a hell of a good interaction at the Venturi, which is nothing more than, like they said, a cone-shaped slot for it to go through. The black can't get through. It just keeps hammering the white through. And the white is our, our um, Bernie particle. And that one there might give us free energy. This one right here. And I've got a little device using that Venturi right there. Sending it through a little Venturi from the laser, which should increase. It's, they claim at least 200 times. This should be at least 200 times this energetic value. So from 5 watts to 1,000 watts would be a hell of a big increase because you don't have to do anything for the Venturi. Venturi is just, it's just a, a, a crushing device. And all it does is crush the fields sideways. They can't get out. They cannot get out. They can't get out of there. You see this? They cannot get out of that crushing event. Can't get out. So they have to get through. And when they do, they smack each other's fields. The black doesn't care. The black will sit right on top of another black and just con all turn into a ball. They really don't care whatsoever about being on top of each other. And that's why you get a black hole in space right there. That's nothing more than a black hole right there. <laughs> the Russians did this in 2015. And they put in charged particles in a vacuum chamber in, in outer space. And the black just went to the center. The glowy particles surrounded it. In, in Earth's gravitational field, all of the white particles would be a, a line right across here. The black would, it would, they would pull to the Earth as hard as they can because that's what Earth wants to do, is be the ground for all the charged particles. So Earth itself, I would say more than likely, the core of the Earth has nothing to do with iron. It's, it's a collection of dark matter. It's been forced to the center and everything tries to get to it. That's what gravity is, lightning, static. Electricity all goes right to ground. It says, give me what you got and collect it around me. Okay, as I have shown you, light is made of neutrinos. The same thing they found at Fermilab, we found in our light experiments. And then we were able to disassociate the two and create the white electron showers and the black sterile muons. This is a muon neutrino, electron neutrino, together. Then they separate to form these. Well, here's what they're claiming, which is totally wrong. All right, this is their claim, neutrino energies. 
It says if it weren't confusing enough to have neutrinos, they had, they changed their value of flavors, they call it, which is different masses and different matter and antimatter, regular matter. Neutrinos also come in a wide variety of energies. The, the harder they push, the harder they shove it back. That's the energy. The energy of a neutrino depends on the process that formed it. No, it doesn't. Well, yes, it does. It, it's the closer to the nucleus, the more energy it will have. The further from the nucleus of the 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 molecule, the atom. If they're way out here, they're just red because they're just barely held on. They just kind of bounce away. If they're way down here, they're tight, and then you get the blue. So all of this stuff is correct. It's just that then they come up with this, and they say because neutrinos have no charge, which that's just not cor correct either. There's no way to use electric fields to accelerate them and give them more energy. Well. I can do it with the Venturi. I just showed you. All right, watch this. This is a red laser. I don't know if you can see the redness of it. Red laser. All right, you see it? I'm going to point that red laser right down here. Whoops. At that LED. And you can see up there we're getting no energy. None. Zero, well, 0.01. Now, so this one has no energy. This is red. Very long frequency. Now, this is blue. See the blue? Now, watch this. This is a very short frequency. High energy. Watch what happens up here. Boom! 2.45 volts. You see that? That's an LED, a light-emitting diode. Well, it's also a solar collector. It was nothing. Solar means just light. And that collected the light from the laser. So that's the two different frequencies, the blue and the red. The red cannot stimulate that particular type of CMOS. However, if you had a whole range of CMOSs that could, could, could collect all of these energies, we could really, really pump up some some solar receivers is what I'm getting at. You need a whole batch of different CMOS depths in very thin film. Thin film CMOS it's, is what it's called, or at least that's what I call it. And so it's almost like spraying it with a paint gun. And all these different layers of metals. And they are going to absorb different impacts of frequency. Some are going to go, bzz, bzz, some are going to go, ooh, that's what the red does. It, it won't turn that on. It can't bang it hard enough. But you put something in it, it gets banged easy. Well, then that will absorb that one. I'll, I'll absorb that one. And then you'll have another one like this that will absorb the blue. And then one that will absorb green. That's what we need is to create a solar cell like that. Okay, when I say that electrons are particles they push and shove well pushing and shoving is going to what's going to happen if there was a ton of electrons trying to push their way out into the air well because that's what's going to happen this is a high voltage wire it blows the candle flame this is by Jericho Nicolia and um, this is very very interesting and it's very nicely done very simple high voltage which would normally just sort of go into the air, into the moisture of the air. Well, what happens in a candle flame is the flame itself is pushing electrons out, because that's all heat is and light is nothing more than expanding electrons. This is going to be pushing against those. They're going to be pushing each other apart. So the candle flame will go this way, that'll go that way. Now, I got it on slow motion, so let's watch what happens. Are you ready? Boom. Now, watch. Wow, look at it go. This thing bounces back and forth because that's kind of rigid compared to a flame. Now, every time he hits it with a juice, that pushes a whole batch of electrons against that. Okay, one of my favorite guys, Anton Petrov, he's talking about photon experiments. Incredi incredible, incredible, 
experiments that may find dark matter or something else. Now, they're using a machine that can detect single photons of light. So here he goes, and here we go. It becomes possible to actually keep track of an entire area where these particles could pass through, affecting the superconducting wires underneath. These nanowires, when fabricated, would look something like this. Really, really small, but extremely accurate and extremely precise. And so in this case, the scientists were able to even fabricate a prototype of this particular device and even give it its first test run. Although in this case... All right, here's what I want to show you. What they are doing is basically what we're doing, is they're focusing the light through the lens. Now, they're not putting it through a Venturi, though. That's the difference. So... I would have to expect that their whole photons are going together and hitting their never separating. Now ours are going through a Venturi here and spraying out only the white because the Venturi is so tiny. So they missed everything. But let's go back to make sure you understand what they're doing. They're putting that light through a very thin set of wires that are supposed to focus it, I guess looks something like this. Really, really small, but extremely accurate and extremely precise. And so in this case, the scientists were able to even fabricate a prototype of this particular device and even give it its first test run. Although in this case, they were looking for another type of a dark matter particle, the hypothetical dark photon. All right, dark photons. Well, what I show is basically dark photons. So you have a white particle and you have a black particle on a photon. There's a photon is, and there's two of them back to back which I've shown many times. Just let's listen to what he has to say and then I'll show you. Which in theory could be found by these detectors relatively easily. But Yes, but you have to go through the Venturi. According to the scientists in this paper, having run this experiment for 180 hours, so far they found no evidence of these dark photons existing. Alright, so they found no evidence of the dark particles. Now, let's show you what we did find. Alright, these, this, uh, let me see if I have the particles, things, alright. This is from Fermilab. These are the two particles they are looking for. They, this is the smallest particles they could ever find. One of them has no mass whatsoever, but it has a, a very strong field. One of them has no field whatsoever, basically, uh, but it's a very heavy mass. So the two of them together make this black and white. You see the black and white? And then there's another one on the side. It has two bar magnets. This is it in its energetic, you know, um, this is the same particle as this, only it's showing energetically what the values are here. So one of them can get small and big, and the other one never changes. And that's exactly what it's, they say. Now, that is the particle squirting right through that Venturi. So what we're showing is the particle accelerating, which was the light, that photon. All right, so this is the photon. And here it goes accelerating. And just before it hits the Venturi, it explodes. Right here, it turns into the black particles separated from the white. That's fission. This is fusion. That should be almost unlimited amount of energy. And this is precisely what CERN and Fermi Labs say. A muon neutrino, the black ball, and the electron neutrino, the white ball, attached together, separate into a muon and an electron shower. You know, I, I can't be any... And here they are attached together. Now, they don't ever really see this at CERN or Fermilab because when they hit, they just get a lot of debris because they're hitting particles head on, huge ones. We're using light, so we can actually see this here. We can see the neutrinos start to show up, which are light particles, but they, are, they start to change as they concuss against each other because these are starting to stack up. So this is one flavor. This is another flavor here. This is the photons. Then they get really brilliant and very, very long because they're pushing back against this extremely reverse radiation, huge re reverse radiations. These may even be reverse radiation. I don't know. 
But this is forward particles until they explode at the venture. And um, and we're seeing that in the green is the same particle only it's green and it's much more concussive than the red these are the same time through the same venture it just pushes the red right out of the way um, so I have all the evidence I know I have so, so much evidence about this light it's just incredible it is a particle I, can, I, I understand about the neutrinos, I understand about the different flavors, I understand about the muons, electron showers, fission and fusion, the venturi. This is called a Dirac neutrino when they're together. When they split, they go to sterile muon, electron shower. Anybody wants to discuss it, I am here. <laughs>